Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Trumu, Frito-Lay, and Sara Lee, is a proud sponsor of the 2016 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. for state championship soccer as we are live here from the county soccer park in des moines the class 3a state championship features iowa city west taking on ankeny centennial hi again we're one with justin borster this is vj shaben and justin a great matchup on hand here for the class 3a title game as these two teams can really get up and down the field BJ, we're in for a nail back to, back to today because Ankeny Centennial and City West play the same type of football, attacking style, like to get it up front, get it wide, get players into the box. I'm excited. We're in for a cracker today. Well, it's been hot here at the state tournament so far. And what else is hot? The team's resumes. Let's take a look at Iowa City West first. Started the season 3-3, three and three, but have won 15 straight. They're the, the defending champs. They've got six players who are moving on to Division I soccer. They've got loads of key players. And, you know, what else is impressive about this team is that everyone gets involved. Now for Ankeny Centennial, they, too, have quite a resume. The school's first ever state soccer title match. They've only trailed in just two matches this season. They've outscored opponents 94 to 5. They've got five players who are going to play D1. Their key player, Meg Brandt, the two-time Gatorade Player of the Year, will be going on to play college soccer at Nebraska. Well, the two teams are hitting the field right now for the introductions. You know, they do have one common opponent. It's Centennial's crosstown rival, Ankeny. Iowa City West won 1-0 earlier this year as Centennial took care of their crosstown rival. That score was 4 to nothing. It is time now for the team introductions. And to do that is our public address announcer from Muscatine, Al Hilton. Welcome to Soccer Complex and the 2016 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Class 3A State Championship Game. Let's meet the teams now competing for the Class 3A state title. First of all, the visiting team is the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Reserves for Ankeny Centennial, Marissa Lopez, Kenzie Geiger, Kayla Oborny, Mackenzie Langstrat, Morgan Patkin, Victoria Eubin, Lizzie Johnson, Anna Robin, Emily Larson, Marissa Smith, and Christine Keneath. The head coach is Chris Allen, assistant coaches Peter Rame, Nick White, and Mick Dickinson. The home team is the Iowa City West Women of Troy. Reserves for Iowa City West, Rachel Saunders, Jen Kewen, Carlin Morsch, 
Holly Paulson, Amy Peterson, Abby Zimmerman, Morgan Schmidt Morris, Marnie Vonderhaar, Rachel Olson, Abby Hansen, and Leah Rhodes. The head coach is Dave Rosenthal. Assistant coaches, Frank Fiordalisi, Ryan Stewart, and Colin Swanson. And now let's meet the starting lineups. First of all, for the Jaguars. Naomi Lopez. Sammy Stolk. Kayla Grenier. Adri Gunn. Meg Brandt. Abby Yosky. Kate Johnson. Natalie Beck. Claire Dom, Jesse Alt, and Emily Fontana. And now the starters for the women of Troy. Caitlin Ryan, Tia Saunders, Katie Olson, Reagan Steigletter, Gila Nadler, Claire McDonald, Anna Zimmerman, Marissa Frisbee, Emma Cooper, Lexi Schaefer, and Peyton Potritz. Your officials, the referee is Trent Payne, first assistant, Kelly Dunbar, Second assistant, Mike Palmer. The fourth official is Paul Assange. Good luck to both teams and let's play hey, championship, championship soccer. soccer. We're about ready to let it roll here for the class 3A state title game. Iowa City West trying to do something that no one's done, which is won back-to-back -back championships in class 3A. Let's take a look at their starters here today. Back in the net, it'll be Caitlin Ryan, who's been stellar over the last 15 games in front of her. Saunders, Olson, Schaefer, and McDonald. And then your midfielders, Steigletter, Zimmerman, Nadler, Potratz, and then you've got Frisbee and Cooper, who are the forwards. Ankeny Centennial coming into the game at 20 and 1. And here is their lineup put out there by head coach Chris Allen. You've got Lopez in at net. You're the defenseman, Stelk, Yoski, Greiner, and Alt. Midfielders are Brandt, Beck, Gunn, and Johnson. And also, Kanit. And then also Dom is your forward. So they actually load it up with midfielders. And then you have one sweeper out in front. And we talked to both coaches, Justin. They're making some changes here for this championship game and how they're going to line up. Yeah, Ankeny Centennial are coming in 4-2-3-1. They're going to be very, very cautious in the beginning just to see how City West play. Um, get a good understanding and the feel of the dynamic um, of the team and look to counterattack. plus keep it simple. City West play a 4-3-3. They want to close down Meg Brandt. She's dangerous, going to Nebraska next season. They want to stop the combinations within, the, within their midfield going forward and then look to get the ball in behind them quickly for Emma Cooper to pounce onto. Well, it is hot here at the County Soccer Park as the referee Trent Payne is about ready to put it in play. This is the third game in as many days that they've had to deal with the heat. And it's really a battle of survival, if you will, once you get to this point, the state championship game, as to how you're going to play. So West wearing their away green uniforms with white numbers and Centennial. The Jaguars going to be wearing their white uniforms with black numbers trimmed in silver. So the women of Troy start with the ball first as they'll play it around and back. And look at Centennial. They will attack and attack and attack some more as they try to shift some things around as West tries to counter up the field with Frisbee. She'll try to center it back to the middle. Ball in midfield left wide open. And Centennial will head it ahead into the offensive zone. So we'll see what type of feel we have for this one. Two did not meet during the regular season. 
But West really hot, beating Kennedy, who was unbeaten at 20-0. Many had figured Kennedy would be able to walk right to the state championship game, but West said no. They won 3-0 yesterday in the semifinals. Brandt pitches it here to the near side. That's Gunn. She'll try to loft it on deep, which is quickly countered by Olsen. A lot of time, I'm sure, in the tape room to figure out that play was coming with the lead in deep with the two streaking along the side. So Iowa City West loses the possession. Here comes Centennial. On the opposite side, they're going to streak it towards the corner of the net to try to center it, and it's knocked away. But it will be a corner kick coming up for Centennial, and that'll be Grenier who will do it from the far corner. Dom did well there on the right-hand side, cutting into the box, looking to cut it back, waiting for support to come in through Meg Brandt. However, it was cut out, and uh, good defending there from City West. Here's the boot towards the middle. The header is up and it's off wide. Now down into the corner, kept alive by Centennial. That's Gunn. She'll lose it or it will be a throw in here for West. But Centennial, boy, they have everybody manned up on that throw in. And it will stay with West. Make it Centennial. Gunn. Back on the near side. That one. Slid away by Zimmerman. She'll punch it ahead. Deep in the zone, we've seen some end-to-end -end action so far. Centennial with really the first good look at the net. And the shot went wide. Here they go again, trying to attack. On the outside, the shot in, and it's in. It's offside. Goal, but it was offside. The official Trent, referee Trent Payne called it offside. I'll tell you what, BJ, they've got to watch uh, City West. They've got to watch the pace of Centennial as this ball is played through. And Meg Brand just slightly offside as she came in. Just got to time a run. Brandt was led perfectly on that play, but you're right, just a little ahead of it. Called offside, so no goal, still scoreless here. With 36-40, that was by inches. Here's Fontana, the deep boot. And it will be a keeper kick coming up here by Caitlin Ryan, who's allowed just 10 goals this season. And in fact, she's one of the few goalkeepers who actually played out into the field, too. She scored a goal and had an assist this year. She'll be taking her talents to Wartburg College as the women of Troy will look to put it in play. Centennial had a tussle in the semifinals against Waukee. Actually fell down by quite a bit and had to rally. And coming up at the 20-minute mark of each half, we will have a water break to allow the uh, teams to get refueled. Here's Brandt forcing the turnover. Tries to shift it to the side to Johnson. Now ahead to Brandon coming up and scooping up the ball is Caitlin Ryan. A dangerous play, but Ryan made it as Brandt was lurking. Yoski forces the turnover to Beck. Now to Brandt, trying to use all sides of the field here. Going to stiff right in the middle by Potratz. Back to the middle west now with trying to come up with some offense. Now they'll lead it in. Here's Steigletter. And again, Centennial strong defensively. Sammy Stelk in on the play. She's one of those that'll be moving on to play soccer at the next level. Going to be going to play at Minnesota State. Will Stelk, the senior for Ankeny Centennial. And here comes a goal kick coming up for Centennial. And you might hear the referee, Trent Payne, in the background. We do have him mic'd up for this game, so we appreciate that. And 
It's one of those uh, insights to the game that you don't normally get to hear about all of the, uh, well, the conversations that happen on during the field. So we appreciate that. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union allowing us to do that here on Iowa Public Television. And of course, the officials, the referees have to agree to it too as well. So we thank Trent Payne for doing that here this afternoon. Here's Johnson who will lead it in past midfield and trying to hit it to the corner. Boy, it's a foot race down there as Griner, or Grenier, excuse me, had it roll out of bounds. It will stay with Centennial as they'll throw it in. What are you seeing here, Justin, from these two squads? Well, I think City West need to settle down. <laughs> Centennial are playing at pace. They're looking to break forward quickly. As, uh, as Coach Allen said earlier, they're looking to counterattack, intercept passes, go forward with pace. What uh, City West need to do is get someone like Steigletter on the ball just to slow it down and build it up patiently. Well, yesterday, Iowa City West had trouble in the first half against Kennedy's Diamond. And they were able to figure that out. It's taking them some time here against Centennial as the Jaguars have put a lot of pressure on the women of Troy here so far. Well, you see uh, Centeno set up in a 4-2-3-1. So you can think about it like this. It, there could be five compact in the middle based on that. Um, City West are playing a 4-3-3, so they've got three central midfielders. So basically what's happening with two holding midfielders, two number sixes with Ant Anthony Centennial, it's going to make it difficult for City West to break the lines if they play the role right. So what they've got to try and do is look to pull one of those sixes out of position to try and break the line. This will stay with Centennial. Free kick coming up. Foul call against Iowa City West. Five back up. Five back up. And a little too close to the ball that time was Hela Nadler. So here's Fontana. Strong leg will put it towards the middle, but it's redirected back out by Steigletter. A little bit of a flow here so far for Ankeny Centennial. They've had some momentum, some good shots. They've held the possession. Dan, you would have thought it would have been the opposite side, but the first five minutes, Justin, you look for energy and how they come out. These two teams after playing, you know, two games already in this stifling heat. Yeah, you want to set your standards and expectations. You know, you want to set, stamp a mark very early in the game as Cooper's up here, 1v1. By Iowa City West, rolling it through. Here's Nadler on the far side. Tries to put her left foot into it, but it swims to the right too much. And it's still played in here by Centennial. Dom, far side, Brandt. Played on the state championship. In fact, there were three players off of Ankeny Centennial that played on the state title team in Class 5A this year. Brant was one of them. Here's Fontana tripped up on the play. And another foul called against Iowa City West. It's not going to be the second time. <laughs> Just don't make up numbers. Boy, there's a running conversation going on with the uh, referee here. And again, it's insight you don't normally get. You never talked to the official, did you, when you were playing? Always did. <laughs> Always did. I just wanted to keep them on the toes. Centennial back with Alt. Pushes it across midfield. Gun to the middle. They're going to try to lob it to the center, but an easy ball here for Caitlin Ryan. She's had her work cut out for her here so far. With a nice deep punt here. It looks more like uh, Centennial is shaping up in a 4-1-4-1, to be honest with you, with uh, Natalie Beck just sitting in front of the back four as the number six. Meg Brandt and uh, Kate Johnson are pushed on a little bit further. Iowa City West going to their bench. Abby Zimmerman will check in. And Centennial will come in with a pair. Geiger will check in along with... Christine Kniff.
Out is Beck and Gunn. So it's a throw in from the far sideline. Nice ball and headed back by Centennial. Griner will have to throw it in here for Centennial. See, after that, James Gunn come in, coming off Grenier, coming on to the left-hand side, and Geiger going on to the right. Grenier's throw in out in space. Oh, and nearly out, which could have led to a corner. This is headed up, and boy, playing it wisely was Caitlin Ryan of Iowa City West. However, it's open. They've got an open net. Here's Brandt towards the net. It's, it's a goal, in. yes. Ryan was tracking the ball down, and that allowed Centennial to come after it and crash the party, and Meg Brandt did just that. Meg Brandt had a, Brandt, Brandt, he had a great angle on the ball. As it came across, Ryan goes to smother it, comes out. Geiger takes possession, assists it back. Good angle on the on the approach from Meg Brandt and just chips the goalkeeper, Ryan. One nil to Centennial. Iowa City West was three and three after their first six games. They played from behind before, now have to do that here in the 3A title game if they want to defend their state championship. But a huge goal for Centennial to get it going. And as we've seen in the state title games in 1A and 2A, no team has been able to answer back just yet. West hoping to do so. Yeah, and it's a massive goal for Ankeny Centennial, 12 minutes into the game. Um, for them, it's going to be a, a, a relief. And 1-0 uh, up, it's going to be... It, it, here's the deal. Let's see what City West can do now. They've got to adapt to this as Grenier is offside. So offside My was bad, called Wade. against Grenier. Got the offside first. I see there was a substitution. Uh, Dom, the number nine center forward, came out. Yep. Kate Johnson. Right in the middle. You're smart, 14. Don't waste an easy card, man. So Iowa City West will have a free kick here with Katie Olson. My right foot goes the opposite side. On a battle, and Centennial has been winning the one-on-one -on -one battles here so far. Here's Grenier. Back to the middle to Larson. Montana missed the header, but will keep it on her foot. And it will be turned over to the women of Troy. So Iowa City West will get ready. As checking in will be Leia Rhodes. And also Rachel Olson, the freshman defender, will come in. Out is Marissa Frisbee, and also will be checking out as Anna Zimmerman. One nil Ankeny Centennial. And you know that's got to bother the keeper quite a bit when she got out of position and could not make that play of smothering the ball. Yeah, I mean, she was just caught, caught off her line and Meg Brand had a great angle on it and just managed to chip it. Uh, lovely ball played in from Geiger. And it looks like they're rotating players here. You know, obviously with yesterday's weather, BJ, I mean, they're looking to rotate the players and keep fresh legs in. Natalie Beck is in in place of Kate Johnson. Grenier in the middle, had it deflected away. Here's West trying to move it up with Rhodes. And that one booted off. Rachel Ols Olson caused the play. And it will stay with Iowa City West. McDonald with the throw. 
And misplayed the pass back, so it's a turnover. Iowa City West still haven't uh, settled into this game. They're still trying to find a rhythm, and it's been, been disrupted by uh, Anthony Centennial, who've done a good job of it. Trying to go over to the far side to Geiger. With the right foot, cannot get it. It's misplayed, but Centennial's going to get another corner kick. Their second of the game. Up 1-0 already. Here's a look from inside of the net. Try to shade it. This one deflected up. And this time it will be hauled in by Caitlin Ryan with the sure hands. Women of Troy have not been able to create much offense here so far. Now trying to get their best offensive possession here with Cooper. And Cooper might have gotten an extra shove, but holds her ground as Kniff was defending on the play. Nothing wrong with that. I know, I know Cooper can give it as well as she shields the ball. A little bit of pushing and shoving. That's okay. McDonald with the throw in. Back to center. Well, Puttritz out over to the side, and Nadler can't control it as it's turned over to Centennial. Nadler again to the middle to Seigletter. Olsen will play it back. Well, just lost the footing there. This might be an opportunity for Centennial. We're trying to get numbers back, slowing down the pace. When they just weren't there, nobody could catch up for Larson. We are nearing the water break here of the first half. Centennial has struck first with Meg Brandt with the goal on the assist from Kenzie Geiger. Cooper lost it. Went still nobody home, and now we have a whistle. Don't revolve your late. Part of uh, Ankeny Centennial's plan is to probably maintain Cooper because she gets side on, she shields the ball well, and tries to spin and turn. So they're doing a good job so far. With 19 minutes into the game, just containing her. Here's Katie Olson with her right foot. Towards the center and coming up for Centennial is going to be Lopez. Naomi has only allowed four goals all season. The one loss for Centennial was to Johnston, 1-0. And that was right before the postseason, a couple of games. They've really righted the ship in a big way. Still in play. Game starting to take traction on a physical nature to it. Centennial rolling it ahead here with Geiger. Kniff back to the outside to Geiger. From the right corner, it's up and going to be hauled in by Ryan. Ryan trying to create some momentum the other way. On a hot day, that's tough to do to get back down onto the other end of the field. Ryan with a good boot. The Iowa State recruit. Potratz is going to be fouled, and look at this. Lovely passage of play there There's by Potratz, the just uh, the taking the ball and running at the uh, Ankeny Centennial back line. Goalie ball now. Taken down at the edge of the box. I'll set the, I'll set the wall. So Stelk 
That's a little spray for you too. So set the ball off and then I'll mark it. Looks like Steigler is going to get over the ball. Still call. Take a step back for me. Take a step. For the foul. Now they're going to mark the wall. And here we go with Iowa City West Steigletter. Where boot up and just that's off the top ball. of the board, still Good alive, ball. and that's going to be held in by Lopez. She is standing on her head and using every inch of the net. Well, good free kick taken by Steigletter, coming off the crossbar. Cooper reacted first, very proactive on the rebound. Great save by Lopez to her left hand side. Yeah, Cooper had a great rebound opportunity here. Take a look at it. So as you can see, it's a crossbar. And then Cooper pounces on it. Good save. Get your water. And now we've got a water break with 18.55 to play in the first half. A water break will be taken. But it's Ankeny Centennial, led by Meg Brandt. Goal 12 minutes in gives them a 1-0 lead as you're watching the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Girls State Soccer Championships here on Iowa Public Television. They can come off too. This is a new number for us, one that I've just written, hot off the press. In the 1930s, England was going mad for a new kind of music, jazz. All my life I've been somebody, all fight up and not nobody. And the clash of cultures that resulted is splashed across the screen in Dancing on the Edge. The people in charge of these places are quite unbelievably conservative. They're going to be the biggest band in Britain, and we will have helped create them. You may, under no circumstances, use the main entrance or the main lobby at any time. And you may not entertain guests of any kind in your room. What are you doing? I just made a friend. But fame and fortune are quickly followed by scandal and intrigue. A little mischief might well do them some good. As Stanley and Louie find themselves entangled in the private lives of the rich and shameless. You think he's going to make you famous? Think he's going to make you a star? Put you on the front cover of his magazine? Everybody told me not to have a Negro band here. Now they're involved in a knife attack. The fans aren't involved for heaven's That's sake. They weren't even here. Yeah. They were playing for the Prince of yeah. Wales. Chiwetel Ejiofor, Matthew Good, Jacqueline Bissett, Jenna Coleman, and John Goodman star in Dancing on the Edge. Dancing on the Edge. Coming to Iowa Public Television Sunday, June 26th. PBS, what's coming up? You'll never guess. We'll meet some famous presidents and tour their famous residence. We're going to shake the family tree to search our genealogy. Detective teams are out in force. Inspector Lewis, Endeavor Morse. We'll leap into the clear blue sky to see how nature's creatures fly. And fireworks, the answer's yes. It's summertime on PBS. PBS programs were honored with 15 Daytime Emmy Awards. Our shows engage and inspire, and you make them possible with your support. Watch these and other award-winning programs at pbs.org awards. You gotta wait for the cue. Hang on. Next time on Father Brown, when a musician is killed, poisoned, suspicion falls on the victim's rival, a voodoo priest, voodoo, voodoo, and solving this mystery will require a sacrifice. Father Brown. See it Sunday at 6 on Iowa Public Television. 
1-0, Ankeny Centennial with the lead over Iowa City West as we are at the water break with 18.55 to play. This game starting to pick up some momentum for both teams. Of course, Centennial on the board already as Meg Brandt scored at the 12-minute mark in. And Iowa City West just had a golden opportunity. Hit the top bar of the net and then missed on the rebound too as well, which was hauled in by Naomi Lopez. Then has only allowed four goals all season, and I bet you she could name them. 1-0 here is the first half. Rolling right along, and here comes Centennial. Quick on the strike. And knocked away. And now we will get a whistle to stop. A whistle of foul called here against Centennial. Just relieving pressure, pressing, little foul. Now Centennial can drop off and get behind the ball. So McDonald will put her foot into it. Trying to run it deep. And we'll get another whistle as taking the forearm shiver to the back was Steigletter, who quickly puts it in place and puts it in play, but Centennial was not caught napping. Potrat's here to the near side. City West will swim it around here with Zimmerman and others. Now McDonald trying to go to the middle. Cooper back to the near side, Steigletter, and this one's going to be rolled right into Lopez. It looks like uh, Iowa City West have come out with a bit of energy this second part of the first half after the water break. Beck brings the ball out of the air. Grenier down the near sideline. Well, big cut back now, a big strong kick that's hauled in and tailed right into Caitlin Ryan. Another save for her. Well, both keepers have had to be on their toes the last five minutes of action. Steinglitter to Yoski. Grenier along the near side. Centennial trying to win their first ever state championship in soccer. Starting to run away with things. That school, an athletic school, winning state volleyball, basketball already. Titles they've owned. Here's a shot that's hauled in again. Grenier has been lurking many times. And Caitlin Ryan again holds it in. Back on the other end. Why waste time, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's end to end. I mean, Grenier one minute's crossing the ball. Ryan gets it, plays it out onto the left hand side. And Iowa City West looking for a quick break to get forward. Four, two, three, one is designed for the two holding midfielders to stop the penetration of that ball played into Emma Cooper. I have now seen five passes played into her feet. So. One, it's not working, or two, the players aren't listening to the two center backs. Trying to get her involved, but going to need some space, too. Here's Grenier. Tries to send it deep. Peterson lost it for the moment. This is going to be deflected out. Let's see. As we're going to get subs into the game here for Centennial. Coming back in is Adri Gunn. Also back in is Claire Dom, the senior. Dom with 20 goals this season. Or during the regular season, which was the most on the team. Here's a corner kick coming up for Centennial. Back towards the net, and this one's Lovely up and in! Centennial punched it in, and how about that from deep? Gunn, the top assist leader on the team, gets one of her own. So as we take a look at this corner, Gunn whips it in with her right foot, bending into the far post, eludes the goalkeeper's outstretched hands off the post and in. Two 
nil Centennial on West. And it is beyond go time here for the women of Troy. But in the 3A level, we've seen some big scores put up. So there's loads of offensive talent. Iowa City West put three goals up on the board yesterday against Kennedy. And here's another shot. This one goes wide. And the momentum has been on Centennial's side here the last minute. Boy, did it change hands, especially with that corner kick. Yeah, and uh, Dom did a great job, but just earlier on on the far side, holding the ball up and waiting for support to come in. Didn't uh, deliver too early when Gunn got the ball on the edge of the box to uh, deliver a strike on goal. They actually credited that goal to Sammy Stolk, but... I think Gunn knows what happened, <laughs> or at least she gained, gained another assist. I think Gunn's going to claim that, to be honest with you. I think the ball's yeah. across the line, and uh, Stork came in just to finish it off. Hit the inside of the post. So here's West. No matter, Centennial leads it 2-0. West trying to run it on deep, and now Lopez will put her foot into it. West will gain the possession. Potrat's out ahead. <laughs> so West will throw it in here. This was a bang bang collision here. Tori, you've been going into close down Steigletter. Half a dozen of one, 50-50. Fontana and Johnson back in for Ankeny Centennial. Ubin will grab some bench too as well. Now a deep ball down the field and that might be too deep. And it is, so Iowa City West will get it back. Two nil our score. And Centennial yesterday found themselves behind against Waukee and just kicked it up a couple of notches to get back into it and then win it. And Waukee actually had late, had a chance to win it with a penalty. But it sailed up over the crossbar. So here comes another corner kick for looks the like, Jaguars. Looks like Geiger's going to take the corner. Kenzie Geiger. Centennial will set up. Here's a low line driver, and this is booted right back out. So we'll do it again. Another corner kick. Fifth corner kick of the game for Centennial. They're going to switch it up here. Kniff will do the corner. Kniff towards the net. This one's up in the air. Kniff will track it down. Still can't get it. Kniff towards the net, and that one sails over the bar. It's a well-taken corner, handled very well in the box by Iowa City West. As we take a look at the replay here. Close down by Meg Brandt. Brandt. Kniff just leaning back as she struck the ball, bending it over the bar. Grenier back in. Geiger out. Pontrats will lean it ahead. But again, Centennial's defenseman well rested. Here over the last minute or so. Yeah. 
Women of Troy trying to mount a comeback here. Two on three. Trying to run with it with Cooper. Cooper with the left foot. And that will be hauled in by Lopez. Cooper trying to find a way to get a team going. Trying to find ways to get strikes on goal. Manages to get it on her left foot. A Steigleder collects it into the, in the midfield. Now the deep ball. It's a foot race. Frisbee trying to track it down. Not there as Gincentennial's defense. He's not had much action here as of late. Now they've been really steady at the back. BJ just managed to keep everything in front of them. They don't want to let Cooper in behind. 8.30 to play here in the first half. Centennial up 2-0. We got cameras to help out too. Brant and Gunn both scoring for Centennial. Women of Troy trying to win back-to-back -back state championships. Centennial going for their first. And now here come the Jaguars. Mis miscommunication on the pass there from Grenier, trying to find Dom. Dom was making a run into the space. Grenier played it the opposite way. And Fontana will do the throw in. Now we've got a sub. Ubin is back in for Centennial. And coming out is Jesse Alt. Again, a lot of the defensemen being rotated around, not staying out in the heat too long. Again, Fontana with the throw in. 2 0 Centennial. It's the third game of the day for the 3 A. State championship between Ankeny Centennial and Iowa City West. The Class 1A state championship went to Davenport Assumption. 2A title to Council Bluffs Lewis Central. Now we're trying to determine who's going to win the 3A crown. What good head volley there. Everyone's competing for the ball. Potratz pinballed around by Brant, and Potratz will lean it ahead. It's a good tackle from Potratz. Now here she is up at the top, working against Brant. This pass kicked away. Yaski had one decision of it, said, okay, let's regroup here defensively. Now West with the throw in. McDonald looking for an opening. Trying to find Cooper, the Michigan recruit. Frisbee to Potratz. And that one goes out. Centennial will have it back on the turnover. And Centennial back to their bench. Kenzie Geiger will check back in. Also looking to check in. Is Kayla Aborni. So Centennial and their head coach, Chris Allen, using a lot of players here in the first half. Cooper trying to get caught up in traffic. And Iowa City West fans are upset, Justin. What what are they looking at that we're not seeing? Well, the, I think they're appealing for a handball, but it wasn't, it, the hand was across the chest and it's like hitting the chest, so it didn't stop a passage of play. Um, I, I, the referee made a good decision, put it that way. Here's a deep shot, Lopez again right there. Giving it a whirl was Anna Zimmerman. Still score holds at 2-0. Steigletter down the field, trying to hit it to the corner to Rhodes. Rhodes lost it out, and it will be a corner kick coming up for Iowa City West, so an opportunity to get back into this game. As West is ready to check in Olsen, along with Nadler. Not just yet for Nadler, but Olsen is in. 
She comes in place of Zimmerman. So here we go with the corner kick. Cooper will send it. It's up high. The header goes out, and Ankeny will just live for another opportunity here as they boot it out. Potras just got a glancing header on it. Just not enough to get it towards goal because she had to step back to try and head it forward. So it was a difficult one to get a hold of. Now Nadler back into the game with a throw in here. McDonald to Cooper. Potratz to Cooper. Now to Steigletter. Tries to go to the side to Frisbee. Frisbee can't get it. Great defensive play that time by Ankeny Centennial's Abby Yaski. Very good defending by Yatsky. And a good delivery forward. Iowa City West looking for that breakthrough moment here offensively. They can put one on the board. Here's Frisbee. Steigletter. To Cooper. Goes to the far side to Nadler. Is well ahead of the play, and Fontana will just clear it. Well, coming up at the half, Ankeny Centennial's Carly Kerrigan has spent much of her life with a golf club in her hand. Iowa Public Television follows Carly on her journey from the high school links and beyond. Coming up after the conclusion of our first half of soccer here. We've got that and more to nil our score. As Centennial's out in front, and here come the Jaguars with a quick toss in along that far side. And it's turned right back over. Coaches are doing a nice job, Justin, on the rotation, trying to make sure heat doesn't become a factor. Yeah, it's very important that they take care of the players, and especially after yesterday. It was grueling heat yesterday. It's grueling today, late in the afternoon. Doing a great job as uh, Centennial look to... Here's a shot up. And hauled in by Caitlin Ryan. Boy, Ankeny Centennial with the quick trigger there. That time out of Aborni. Last year, Ankeny High won the 2A title. Centennial in their first ever trip to the state championship game and they're doing it here in class 3A of course the schools split apart some time ago and uh, amongst their last year that's when Chris Allen was the head coach and he was the head coach when it was just Ankeny combined they won crowns in 2011 and 2013 here's Frisbee trying to give it a shot Lopez swoops it up trying to create a turnover and this one's deep and Iowa City West will throw it in but you think about that then when the school split he decided to go to Centennial a lot of other coaches did too amongst the, the split between the uh, large school district there it was a rebuilding process he knew he had some young players coming through the system built on those young players and this is what we have today they've outscored their opponents this year 98 to 6 and uh, he won his 150th game earlier this season 10 seconds to play in the first half and centennial ready to take a 2-0 lead now the punch it deep potrats will try to knock it out and that should wrap up the first half and it does so Ankeny Centennial behind one of their superstars, Meg Brandt, gets him on the board 12 minutes in. Gunn adds another goal at the 26-minute mark. Centennial has a 2-0 lead over Iowa City West. As things are rolling right along here for the Jaguars, Iowa City West going to try to do what they did yesterday, have a really good second half, and try to come back into this one. Now for Centennial, trying to win the school's first-ever state championship. As we're now joined by their head coach, Chris Allen, who is standing by. And 
Coach, uh, your assessment here of the first half for your squad? Uh, I think we're putting in a really gritty effort out there. Uh, working it wide really well and uh, had some opportunities uh, off that corner, of course, was uh, a, a great shot that she decided to take off that. Um, really proud of the effort and the conditions that we're facing. Coach Allen, the, the great start, by the way, for the first half. What's your message to the players for the second half? Well, um, I think the big thing is a 2-0 lead can be very dangerous. Um, I don't think they'll I don't think they'll take it lightly. It's state championship soccer, uh, but we'll make sure we know about that and that the priority is defending the lead, uh, making sure that we're getting fresh bodies out there and, and everybody's working hard for one another. Well, coach, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck in your preparations here for the second half. That is head coach Chris Allen of Ankeny Centennial. Well, speaking of that school, they've got a senior, Carly Kerrigan, who grew up just a few steps from the Briarwood Club of Ankeny. Her natural swing and competitive drive brought Carly success on the links and new opportunities to compete away from home. People don't understand what all goes on inside your head. You can look blank on the outside and people are thinking, oh, they're spacing off. But really, you could be sitting there thinking, all right, I have a 140-yard shot, but I got to carry water and I don't want to go more than 142 yards because otherwise I'm off the green. Really, you just see the execution, but you don't understand what all goes into it. And that's I mean, the entire game, whether you're happy, sad, mad, or frustrated. We live just off number 14 tee box at Broward Club of Ankeny. It was a babysitter basically for my parents and all of our neighbors. They could just send the kids to the pool and I was always the one going golfing. It's one of our main family activities that we do. That drive to beat the older brother was very strong in Carly. She would go golf with her father every weekend and she just developed into loving the sport and she just doesn't like to lose. Gotta hit it, Carly. She's been better for probably, I hate to admit it, but a couple years now. Whether it was, you know, who's gonna come home with the best, you know, grades or, you know, in the front yard playing soccer. It was more of a competition than just going out and having fun. <laughs> the big thing with young children playing golf is finally getting the ball up in the air. I mean, for years, they just hit grounders and grounders and grounders, but once you finally get the ball in the air, wow, it's fun. She was able to do that at a pretty early age, and so that ju it just clicked for her. I would always do the Family Fun Day Long Drive Contest, and I just love being able to step up and hit a ball like 30 yards farther than all the other girls. Because, I mean, I was so used to growing up with boys and never being the best within all the boys but I was clearly the best in the girls by 30 plus yards. And so that, I, I love being able to hit the ball far and just like that power rush and adrenaline, that's sort of what got me hooked. And I think that's why I still hit the ball pretty far today because for the first 10 years me playing golf, all I did was hit drivers. <laughs> you can tell when players have it. Carly had a strength to her game and the strength was her strength. This is my favorite show of the year. Chris Winkle lives on our street. He's just been very instrumental in um, her success. I've been Carly's swing coach for as long as she's played golf. We're a lot better learners when we're young than we are as adults, as most of you know. With a head pro three doors down, I mean, you're crazy not to say, hey, you want to go golfing? She had a determination, a strength about her. She's done so much on her own and it's obviously fun to watch somebody that you've had that interaction with and sharing their successes. You got girls like Carly that are very competitive and very knowledgeable of the game, and that's what they want to do. They want to compete, they want to play at the next level, and they want to win. I had a tray ball. Seven. And you got a middle group of girls. I have a lot of girls who play multiple sports and are good athletes and are just starting to learn the competitive side of golf. And then you got a group of girls that just want to learn how to play. And that's fine. That's fine. I, I want them out there because it's a life sport. Pop. This is the third year of our program. Ankeny split into two high schools three years ago when she was a sophomore. 
and whether my club face hits it or not, my ball should still have that same normal ball flight, so I'm hitting it at a normal angle. Right. It's almost like she's a point guard for us. You know, point guards in basketball are extensions sometimes to the head coach. I can bounce things off her, vice versa. And so yeah, to build a program around that foundation was, yeah, I'm very blessed. Go, go, go. Good swing. My thing with Carly is the mental side of it. Good miss. I know. Just really try to keep her in the moment. Just trust that God-given ability. OK, just turn it loose a little. You know, golf is 90% mental, and that shows in the attitude, I think. I've had multiple temper issues throughout the years. I think it's just because I'm really competitive. And I mean, it, it's hard to hit a bad shot and turn around and say, oh, well, it's over. It's done with. Oh. Oh, a tad bit more, please. We were in a tournament one Mother's Day. She was having a lot of fun, but I was not, because I was way too competitive. Oh, you can't do that. Get down. We had decided that we would probably be home after the third hole, because she gets so angry with me. Oh, my. Tammy is a, <laughs> Tammy I'm is a, a beginner, beginner golfer, golfer, and I have been for 15 years. I'd go. Sure enough, we get to the third hole, and I said, we will be home soon. She had just missed another really short putt, and I picked the ball up, and I said, get on the cart. I dropped her off at home, and I didn't even get out of the cul-de-sac before my dad called me and said, what happened? She was fine with her game. Stop. It was all my fault, and I was OK with that. <laughs> ah, bite, bite. Please. Golf is a game of overcoming obstacles. You've got to put that shot behind you and recover. You can hit a ball to three feet of the pin, and if you miss that putt, well, you could have hit it to 20 feet and two putted. So it's only as good as the next shot. Yeah, she made it. Good bird. Good bird. Once she came off that 18th hole, it was just unbelievable. I, absolutely the best thing you could ever want for your child. Those two days, those 36 holes, 151 strokes, that was what made me realize what I could do and what I wanted in life. I'm going to the University of South Dakota. I'm excited for college because golf is what I'm there for. She's very happy with her decision. We're happy as parents. And they've been very generous with their scholarship offers. So it's completely paid off for her. That's her reward for all the hours of playing by herself, of going and hitting balls in the rain when no one else is. It's good to see someone rewarded for their hard work. It's a weird sport. You're out there by yourself as an individual, but what she does for this program is, you know, it's gonna be hard to replace. Nothing in my game is perfect. I think I know a lot about golf, and then I watch it on TV, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know absolutely nothing compared to these people. Go. It's really just a work in progress, and I think it'll be a work in progress till the day I die. After winning state as a sophomore, Carly placed second her junior season and fourth in this year's state golf meet. What a story and story building for some of her classmates at Ankeny Centennial. They've got a 2-0 lead as we played one half of soccer. Let's take a look at the first half highlights here. And right away it was dominated by Ankeny Centennial as they're able to run down the ball. This was misplayed. And then it was a nice pass as they're able to find Meg Brandt with the goal's first game from Kenzie Geiger. And then, of course, the kick from the corner. Gunn would be credited with the goal. However, oh, I'm sure things will be talked about on the bus ride back to Ankeny about who got that goal or not. You see the shot, seven to six. Shots on goal, six for Iowa City West, which leads you to believe they're really not that far out of it. 
And you take a look at the corner kick, six to one. Team fouls, yeah, five, two. Centennial with five. And then the Jaguars have been offside twice. Let's head down now and talk with Iowa City West head coach Dave Rosenthal. And Dave, had a long conversation with your team. If we can ask, uh, uh, what'd you say to him about building momentum here for the second half? Sure. You know, this is a game where we got another 40 minutes. Yesterday, we played a, a tough Kennedy team. We scored three goals in the second half. So we're still in this game. We're going to break this down into a couple of 10-minute sections. Uh, water break, another 10 minutes, another 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to fight it back. We just got to get one, and the game changes. The momentum changes, and we'll, we'll be right back in it. But that's what we're going to focus on. Dave, going into the game 2-0 down, what was your message to the players coming out into the second half and what adjustments are you going to make? Right, absolutely. One of the things that we want to do is we're a possession team and we've been outworked. We've been outworked on the 50-50 balls, the second ball. We're going to focus on getting that ball possession back, make the ball do a little bit more work for us, get in support of our teammates, try and build a little bit more of an attack, not rush it quite so much and uh, see if we can get the momentum changed. Thanks, Coach, and yep. good luck in the, here in the second half. That is Iowa City West head coach Dave Rosenthal. By the way, it is hot. The wind's starting to pick up, which is cooling things off moderately. 92 degrees under mostly cloudy conditions. Humidity right at 50%. Winds are out of the southwest at 9. But what does it feel like on the field? I can tell you it's not any better out on the field. In fact, it may be a little bit warmer as... Uh, Ankeny Centennial and Iowa City West are ready to go at it here again. As uh, in the direct sunlight beating down on you, we'll see what happens. But the same starters that began the game are starting here in the second half. It will be the Jaguars ball first to begin the late half. As we're ready to see what happens here. Naomi Lopez, the sophomore. About four goals this season, a few yesterday against Waukee, but not right, much more than that. She's been stellar so far on the six shots that she's seen. The referee, Trent Payne, puts the ball in play, and here we go. The second half underway. It's a Class 3A state championship here on Iowa Public Television. Centennial, when they strike, they strike in a hurry. As this one will dribble out of bounds, stay with the Jags. Grenier. Put the toss in. Potrats had that deflected out. Now the women of Troy will get it back. How are you judging the energy level or exhaustion level of these players out in the field? What are you looking for in particular? Well, it was interesting what uh, Dave mentioned earlier. He's looking at 10-minute spells to rotate players so you can give them breaks and, and get some water into the system. You know, if they, if they, for example, if any of these teams keep the ball and keep the opposition moving, they can rest in possession if it's done right. Into the corner, Grenier tries to center it. And this will still belong to Fontana and Ankeny Centennial. Of course, her dad, the... Head boys coach, Bob Fontana. Uncle, excuse me, Bob Fontana is your uncle. So the Centennial system really drawing a lot of lines around one another. Yeah, and then you've got a dad, Mike Fontana, yeah. who's part of the uh, the football team. I think he coaches the, the right. linemen. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Adding to it, so 2-0 our score, Ankeny Centennial. On Iowa City West. Here's Brandt. Nadler tried to swipe it, but Fontana held her at bay. Grenier. Now the boot blocked on the way by Iowa City West, Olsen. Boy, Cooper really using a lot of energy to get back down the field. And this one played wide and dangerously by Lopez with Cooper lurking. There are going to be some tired players here at the conclusion of this 3A state championship. 
And for Centennial, what's the key here? You're up 2-0. Uh, you know, is it more of a matter of fact of uh, just kind of fending off Iowa City West here over the first few minutes? Yeah, I think they've got to get a feel of what uh, Iowa City West are going to come out with in the first 10 minutes of the match. As, uh, Here's an open net, and this one's going to be denied as backdooring it was Schaefer. Dom just sneaking it past the goalkeeper there, Ryan. But good, good defending by Schaefer coming in on the far post. Yeah, they, they're just going to look to get a feel of uh, Iowa, City, Iowa City West, see how they come out. I have noticed that Meg Brandt has dropped deeper into the, uh, into the midfield, so they're playing kind of with two sixes. My guess is Brandt will break from the, from the sixth position going forward. Natalie Beck will sit. So just protecting the ball from going into Emma Cooper up front. Again, Centennial, good dribbling by Dom. Grenier lost it for the moment. Here's Nadler. Steigletter. Trying to find a way through. No one in support. Manages to win a throw in. Now it looks like we're going to get a sub in here for Iowa City West. Well, yeah. Rhodes will check in. Tia Saunders also in for Iowa City West. Here's Cooper trying to win the one-on-one -on -one battle. Cooper goes to the outside. Boy, they're trying to streak it. Here's a shot that's up and deflected away. Getting a good look at it was Rhodes. And this one's out, so it'll stay with Iowa City West. So they're putting a lot of pressure on now, Justin. Five yes. minutes into the second half. Yes, they are. And they're pressing every ball deep in, in Centennial's half, trying to find a way through as the delivery comes in again from the left-hand side. Rhodes could not get in front of that. Zimmerman to Steigletter. Being patient on the ball. Steigletter looking to attack, and it's stolen away by Fontana. Iowa City West trying to stretch out the field here. Here's Rhodes. Potratz wins the foot race to the ball. And Nadler can't quite catch up to it. Difficult ball to deal with. Should have been played on the ground there to Nadler's feet and maybe then get it back. Let's go. Come on. Everyone sets up. Fontana will throw it in. A high kick. Steigletter. I'd like to see Steigletter looking forward more, possibly into Emma Cooper's feet, and then working off her. She's tending to go square now, square and back. Well, Rhodes trying to create the play there. And Centennial will hold the possession again. 2-0. Both goals coming in the first half. In case you're joining us late, Meg Brandt got on the board about 12 minutes into the game, and then... Ari Gunn scored at the 26-minute mark of the first half. Iowa City West has had a lot of shots on goal, but have not been able to beat the keeper and Naomi Lopez, who puts the ball deep here. Here's Brandt. Played off of her body, and now it's redirected away. Cooper. Midfield sensing some momentum. Got to get numbers back this way. Here's Steigletter. Steigletter with a deep shot. That sails up and out of the stadium. 
You can see they're trying to find a way through. Emma Cooper and Steigleder working together. I'd like to see some of the wide players coming inside into the game just to add a little more support, especially in those situations, because Steigleder didn't really have any options but to shoot. Fifty fifty ball. And this is going to be out, so West will get it back. Saunders with the throw in. Montrant shuffles it back to Olsen. Well, there's no doubt that head coach Dave Rosenthal has seen situations like this. He's been on the winning side a lot, but in his 25th season, 21st at Iowa City West, you know, they scored 45 seconds into the second half against Kennedy the other day, but they were able to do it with some momentum swings. Might have one here. Here's Rhodes towards the net. This is headed right back out, and this is staying in. So Rhodes will have it in the corner, was going to try to play it that way. Cooper tried to chase the ball, and this one booted out so Centennial can regroup. West will have to throw it in. There's just not enough players from uh, Iowa City West breaking into the box. When Rhodes got the ball to deliver, there was one player in the box, and there were four Ankeny Centennial defenders. They need to get more players in. Throw in to Cooper, who tries to shoot it. Fontana there to knock it out. Boy, a good scrum for the ball, and it comes through to Centennial. Boy, that was a great, great jostle between West and Ankeny there. Centennial. Here's Brandt. Down the near side. As Johnson. Sees West kick it away. Grenier will throw it in. Steigletter here to the near side to Nadler. West looking for that little seam to try to put one on the board. Now going to be a foot race to the ball. Rhodes wins it. Now cuts back to the middle. Rhodes with the shot. In! Score! Iowa City West! It started from a ball played into Emma Cooper's feet, and she managed to turn and then play a lovely delivery. Out, out wide, says we have a look at this. What a fantastic delivery out wide. Rhodes cuts in and smashes it. Smashes the ball into the back of the net. Fantastic goal. 2-1. I always said this. Two-goal lead is not enough. Three-goal lead, you're in it. Possibility to win. Two goals, not enough. One goal in it now, BJ. It's game on. A new game is forming here at the County Soccer Park. Here at County Stadium in Des Moines. It's the Class 3A state championship with the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Iowa City West just getting on the board. Leah Rhodes scoring the goal, making it 2-1. Iowa City West trying to win back-to-back -back championships, which would be the first time that would happen in Class 3A. They just started it six years ago, but still would be the first school to be able to do that. Ankeny Centennial standing in their way, was holding a two-goal lead. Now it's at two to one. Be interesting to see the momentum swing now from uh, Iowa City West. See the momentum change, a boost of energy and confidence to drive them forward. It wasn't as if Centennial was trying to be in cruise control. Iowa City West trying to figure out their defense or been able to do that a little bit more here. And again, they've been out shooting Centennial as of late. Here's Johnson trying to drive it deep here for the Jaguars. Centers it to the middle, and it's sent right back out by Olsen. Here's Brandt. Ball really needs to be on her foot. 
Nice composure, just brings it down, lays it out. And this is an unforced turnover by Centennial. Iowa City West going to their bench. Checking in is going to be Rachel Olson. And also in is Annie Peterson. Listen to the crowd. Give a hand for Leah Rhodes, who scored the game's first goal for the women of Troy. It's what the game needed was a goal, and it went to Iowa City West. It's generated some uh, enthusiasm in the crowd. Zimmerman's throw handled by Potrat. And it will be turned over to Centennial. Now Ankeny Centennial will go to their bench. Checking in will be Tori Ubin for the first time, the sophomore defender. As she will come in for Abby Yosky. Two one Centennial. And the game's been mucked up here over the last couple of minutes. Let's see what these two teams have in the tank down the stretch. Again, there's a water break coming up near the 20 minute mark. It's at the referee's discretion. But it's being implemented for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Championships here all week to allow the teams and players and the officials to gain a little bit of water, a little bit of rest because of the heat and the conditions they've had to battle through. And this is the third game in as many days that they've played. You can see Centennial just uh, keeping the ball. Meg Brandt is getting on the ball quite often now, just keeping it composed, slowing it down, and then she speeds it up when she needs to. But they're shifting ball it through the, the back line, four. Please. On the touchline, please. So you heard the referee, Trip Payne, say on the touchline. So here's what Fontana will do here with the free kick after the foul. Now we'll send it towards the net, a high archer. It's up and redirected out. Centennial will hold it in. And this one will be caught by Caitlin Ryan. Yeah, Kniff just lofted that into the air. It was an easy one for Ryan in the end. Ryan with the boot. Cooper tries to catch the pass with her foot. Now Centennial looking to run. Nullified by Olsen. Here's Rhodes. Boy, spun it free past Montana. Foot race to the ball. Rhodes will run with it right in the center of the field. Lofts it towards Cooper. Cooper tripped up on the play. No foul. And we're still in action, which draws the ire of the Iowa City West fans here. Fontana and Cooper going at it. Clean or not? I'll be interested to see that again because uh, it looked like a fair challenge. Studs up, though, but it looks like uh, the ball was won. And we keep on playing. That could have been dangerous had it been called there in the box. And here comes Centennial looking to drive it. You see, that could have been another shot for right. a penalty. Here's a look at that last so line. As you look at this, Fontana comes in. She wins the ball there. Studs up. I think clean. she wins the ball. I think Very it's clean. clean. Yeah, fair enough. And again, Centennial back to their bench. Checking in is Natalie Beck and Claire Dom. Coming off is Lizzie Johnson and Kate Johnson. 2-1 our score. In favor of Centennial, Iowa City West trying to battle their way back after falling down 
Kniff wrecking havoc finds Brandt. Now to Fontana along the near side. And Fontana trying to go with some shifty footwork. And then we'll lose it on the turnover. Good defense by Iowa City West, in particular, Abby Zimmerman. Yeah, Zimmerman was putting pressure on Fontana. They're making it really difficult for her. Olsen. And right in the middle again is Centennial in Kniff. Here's Brandt. Boy, one-on-one -on -one battle here on the inside. And a tackle, the ball comes free, and Iowa City West back up with it, trying to lurch it upfield, and Fontana calling that one clean. As we've seen some contact here in the second half. Fontana launched herself in there to win the ball. Again, I think that was a fair tackle, to be honest with you. And unlike the professional game, <laughs> we're not seeing some acting out here either. No, there's no diving in this game here today. There's contact as Cooper will send the ball deep. And it will belong to Iowa City West with a throw in here. There's a look at Cooper. Peterson calling for it. And now we'll get it. And this is out, and it will be a corner kick coming up for the women of Troy. There's no win really to speak of, so it's not a factor. But Cooper will do the corner kick. Yeah, there's been a momentum swing now, end to end. But Iowa City West are looking to gain some momentum. Let's see what they can do from the corner with an outswinger. Cooper towards the net, it's up, and it's headed back out, but Cooper will haul it in. Still deep inside of the zone. Iowa City West. Now to Olsen with the high kick. Right there is Naomi Lopez. Still 2-1. And we're nearing the water break here of the second half. Here's Brandt. Kniff in the middle. Tries to squib it across there to Dom. Now to the far side. Look out. Here comes Centennial. Tried to center it. And Iowa City West having trouble clearing it. Centennial might have missed an opportunity there, Justin. Yeah, I mean, Geiger came in onto her, left, onto her right foot. She's right-footed, so she's coming in left to right, looking for that chance. Closed down by the two centre-backs. Well, that's going to bring us to a water break. The referee, Trent Payne, has called for it. 2-1 our score. We've got ourselves quite a game here. A firecracker, if you will, if we're from overseas. 19.39 to play. 2-1 our score as you're watching the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Class 3A Girls State Soccer Championship right here on Iowa Public Television. Yep. Can you hear you? Who's this? If you want a real story, you should ask the police what is happening in the Eurotunnel. It stretches more than 30 miles, linking France and England. But this summer, it will become an international crime scene, the tunnel. There's a body across the borderline between France and England, and uh, the French police are there, and um, we're the English police. Two detectives, one French, one English, team up in pursuit of a serial killer, while a tabloid journalist feeds his obsession. He sees the direct consequences of what this killer is doing. Uh, because he's the one who was told, he's the one talking to this guy on the phone. Help me out here, right? Help me understand your position a little bit better so that I can explain it to the ignorant masses. So he is seeing, almost more than any other character, what the killer sort of sounds like, what they're doing, what they're talking about. You will be asking, of course, why? Of course, why? Who would do such a thing? What is the message? 
Filmed on location in France, England, and beneath the English Channel, The Tunnel will keep you guessing until the very end. The Tunnel, a special 10-part miniseries. Coming to Iowa Public Television, Sunday, June 19th. For generations, Market to Market has served as a trusted resource for more than 50 million Americans who live and work in the heartland. Hello, I'm Mike Pearson, and I'm proud to host the Weekly Journal of Rural America. After more than four decades, Market to Market continues to provide solid reporting on rural issues and expert analysis of commodity markets that fuel the rural economy. So join us Friday nights at 8 and Sunday afternoons at 1230 right here on Iowa Public Television. This year, PBS programs were honored with 15 Daytime Emmy Awards. Our shows engage and inspire, and you make them possible with your support. Watch these and other award-winning programs at pbs.org slash awards. The Sioux City Symphony Orchestra celebrates a century of great performances with the Ode to Joy concert featuring select works of Aaron Copland and the triumphant sounds of Beethoven. Ode to Joy, Sioux City Symphony Orchestra, 100th year. Tune in to Iowa Public Television, Sunday at 3.30. Join the conversation online with Iowa Public Television. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us on all our social networks. 2-1 our score as we're at the water break here in the second half of the Class 3A State Championship here on IPTV with Justin Forster. I'm B.J. Shaben, and it is hot out in the field right now. But air temperature climbing uh, well above 90, and of course down in the field even warmer. As we're ready to conclude this game, and it's starting to turn into a nail biter here, as you see, mostly sunny, 91 degrees. Feels like 100 with the humidity at 55%. The wind's out of the south at 10. As Centennial and West ready to go at it. This one's getting more interesting. What is West doing right now that they weren't doing in the first half as Leah Rhodes is back into the ball game, the goal scorer for Iowa City West? Well, I'm glad Rhodes is back into the game. They go, now they've got to really start pushing forward with 19 minutes left if they're going to get this elusive goal that's going to bring them back into the game at 2-2. We'll see what happens. They need to get it into Emma Cooper's feet more often. She's dangerous. If Ankeny Centennial give her time to turn, they need to be careful. Centennial has been playing like a champion all year. Now here for her state championship, what do they need to do to finish off West? Well, they need to drop an extra player into the midfield and make it as compact as possible. They, don't need, they, they need to stop Reagan Steiglader from playing. Um, they need to also take care of Potras because Potras is a box-to-box -box player, like a number eight in a 4-3-3. They need to take care of her as well and close it down and don't let it distribute. Take care of the dangerous players and deny the penetration forward. Here's Potras who will lean it ahead towards Cooper. Looking to find a wing or a streaker down the side. Now here comes Rhodes, who had it knocked away. Played well defensively by Centennial and Jesse Alt. And now we get a whistle. St Steigleder did well just to draw the tackle. That's your third foul of the game. That's it. Next one, i got to push it down. Well, Ge Geiger's been let... Uh, I mean, that's a lifeline. Three fouls, the third one of the day. And the next one's going to be a yellow card, possibly. Some referees allow you one or two. <laughs> So that's big, and the header goal kick. misdirected, oh, yeah, so it'll be a goal idea. kick coming up here for Lopez. And it looks like we're going to get a sub in for Centennial. Coming in is Gunn. Grenier is coming out.
Lopez with a little bit of gamesmanship, taking her time, ready to put the ball on the tee, and here we go. Let's it fly. Now West. Olsen, who's been steady defensively here. Now Rhodes. Now Olsen and McDermott have done a better job in the second half defensively. And West will have it with a throw in along the far side of the field. So two winner scores. Centennial got both of their goals in the first half. Second half, it was Iowa City West. As Rhodes was able to get it. Now here's Centennial with Brandt. Brandt with a good crossover. Now with the right foot trying to get it free, but she's quickly swallowed up by West. When Meg was setting herself up for a shot. I think she was uh, indecisive there. She had an option to her left, which might have been the, the better option, but I think she was trying to get it on her right foot to have a strike. Maybe should have gone into Dom on, the, on her left-hand side. Centennial will play it all the way back. And West will get it back on the turnover. 16 minutes to play, 2-1 your score. West trying to tie this one up. One last year's state championship over Dowling Catholic, 1-0. And trying to do it again here in 2016. I remember that Emma Cooper with the goal from the cross it was a fantastic goal. Sumption won the Class 1A state championship. They were successful against Iowa City Regina. In the 2A title game, it was all Council Bluffs Lewis Central as they downed Pella 5 to nothing. And here, Iowa City West trying to battle their way back after Centennial jumped out to a two-goal lead. Boy, a game of gotcha over on the far side of the field. Here's Cooper. Potrats. Now tries to shoot it down to the far corner. And yep. this one will roll out. Yeah, Zimmerman was uh, just trying to peel wide. She might have just peel wide and into space so she can get it at feet. Potras was forced to play it into space and it went out for a goal kick. Kate Johnson will rotate in. She's in for Dom. Let's go. And now Lopez. Now that looks like they put uh, Johnson up into a center forward position. Rhodes will try to pick up the loose ball. A little bit of a scramble, lost it in traffic. I want to remind you, coming up at the end of July, you can catch all of the State championships in Iowa high school softball right here on IPTV. That'll be coming up at the end of July. As the Fort Dodge is ready to welcome a lot of teams, all five classes battling it out. You know, and some of these players, too, will transition quickly to club soccer. Some will go back into softball. I mean, there's just a lot of activities that keep a lot of these athletes busy year-round. Yes, absolutely, BJ. I mean, a lot of these players out here, when this is done, will report to club training if they're going to regionals in two weeks' time. So it's nonstop. The bodies aren't going to get a rest. <laughs> and he had talked about earlier today about how you feel after just one game in a, in a heat like this. You need about 72 hours to recover. They haven't had that luxury. No team in the state title game has. No, they haven't. And 72 hours, hours is ideal. It's, Cooper gets the ball into feet to turn. Now we'll pass it ahead. Trying to find Rhodes here on the outside, trying to shake it free. We'll go back out to Skygletter. That one fought for, and Iowa City West will have the throw in. Boy, these two teams are really going, getting after it right now. Yeah, and you can see Iowa City West are trying to generate most of their attacks down the right-hand side, trying to get Rhodes into the game. And this was last touched by Rhodes, so 
Ankeny Centennial will substitute in. Griner, or Grenier, excuse me, is in. Looks like Natalie Beck's coming out. Geig is actually doing a good job there on the left-hand side right now, just make, maintaining and containing roads. Potratz forces the turnover now to Cooper right in the middle. Cooper has it denied, though. Centennial has identified her. Cooper, she usually has two white jerseys around her anytime the ball is close. You're going to need two or three around Cooper. She's dangerous. You don't want to give her half a chance. Again, going to be playing at the next level, Division I at Michigan. And first force turnover to Brandt of Centennial. Jags got it. 11.20 to play. Clock continues to tick. And once you hit under that 10-minute mark, talk about the pressure that amplifies up on you, when, especially when you're down. I think it's both ways as well because you don't want to concede a goal if, you, you, if you're defending a lead. And then obviously if you're chasing the game, you're going to push numbers forward. So you start getting nervous and you're looking for that one goal. What's, what's going to happen? Is this going to elude us in the end? So, you know, I, th I think now from a Iowa City West point of view, they might need to push one of their back four up. There's four players marking one right now. You don't really need that. They're looking for goals. They've got to start pushing players forward. It's like Centennial wants to, to get a sub in. They're going to have to wait. Lizzie Johnson checking in right at midfield. Here's Brandt. Well, she has commanded the middle when she's needed to today. Yeah, she's done a good job. Like oh, I mentioned earlier, she, she knows when to speed up the game and when to slow it down. And when she speeds it up, she goes at them with pace, trying to find little combinations into feet. Pontrats from the outside. Sends it to the middle. Right there is West. Here's Zimmerman, the shot that's hauled in by Lopez. So. They're trying to attack that way is Rachel Olson, I beg your pardon. And Lopez to haul in the shot. And we do have a foul here called against Centennial. Yeah, definitely a foul. And now we're waiting for a ball. Iowa City West yeah. is not liking these delays. No, nah, there's definitely a foul off the ball. You see the clock winding down right there in your left-hand corner of your screen. Olsen will put a charge into it. This gets back deep, but Lopez there to play it off the bounce. Olsen was reacting to... Uh, to the ball played in if she was a little more proactive there she would probably probably would have got onto that here's cooper swing it out to the side to zimmerman is that saunders Back to Potratz. 8.20 to play here in the game. Here's Cooper, will kick it out. Rhodes with the deep centering pass, and that one just missed Steigletter. Iowa City West will track it down. Now try to keep it inside of the zone with Saunders. Nearly forced on the turnover, and how about the play there by Centennial's Grenier. Came in to nearly take it away. But again, it ate some time off the clock. Cooper trying to handle the pass. Centennial trying to re restrain the pressure here from Iowa City West as they break the lines with Geiger driving forward. You can see some tired legs out there. She plays it into gun. 
Gunn going to run it down into the corner. Now makes Olsen miss. Here's Gunn with a shot. It's up and it's off. It's free. Centennial had nobody there for the rebound and this is off the top of the bar. Now the header. Rhodes will just clear it and Centennial became the aggressor. Wow. But well, we've gone from one end to the other. Grenier with the strike, coming off the crossbar. A million of players looking for the rebound. Geiger looking for the rebound. Just couldn't quite get to it. Just hits her on the top of the forehead. Got some changes. Morgan Schmidt Morris is into the ball game for Iowa City West. Lizzie Johnson, Claire Dom, and Emily Fontana is into the game here for Ankeny Centennial. Still 2-1 your score. Centennial about added the dagger to this one here with just under seven minutes to play. Here's Fontana. She's rested and ready to go. Saunders cannot catch up with it. And West will get it on the turnover. Centennial defending desperately. Anywhere will do right now. Five minutes to go. They're just kicking it anywhere. Got a goal to play with here. West trying to tie it up. Maybe for some extra time here. Here's Cooper. This one's going to be sliced out. Good job defensively by Centennial and Stelk. Yeah, lovely, lovely tackle. Lovely covering there by Stelk. Potratch here to Cooper, got free. Cooper, boy, again, yeah, just some backside defense really helping out on the play. Yeah, some good good cover there by Eubin. Again, it's uh, Cooper just spinning Stalk there onto, spinning out onto the right-hand side. Now just out into space, it's a foot race to the ball. That one kicked out, so Centennial will get it back on the turnover. Two one Ankeny Centennial with the lead here on Iowa City West. Saunders to Cooper. Back to Saunders on the wing. Looking to dribble it in. Saunders tries to go with the shot, but that's redirected back out. Stellar play in the middle by Stelk. Now the throw into Steigletter. What good back cut. Now to Saunders in the corner. Clean play. And it will be a throw in here for West. Way, Tell you what, Fontana's a tough defender. It's hard to get by her. That was a solid tackle by Fontana. And now the steal by Brandt. Well, she led Class 5A in basketball in steals this year and just came up with a big one right there in soccer. Here's Rhodes. No whistle. Clean tackle. Olsen will boot it back down the field. And this one will remain in. Cooper lurking. We can hear the women of Troy fans trying to urge on their team here. Here's Centennial. They're going to botch it ahead. Close play, and now the shot, which goes high and wide. Offside. And offside is the call. Remember, Centennial had a goal earlier in the game called back because they were offside. Fontana. Down into the corner to Johnson. And this is kicked out. And we've got substitutes coming in. They're trying to manage the game now. 
BJ, hear the shouts from the coaching staff. Take it to the corner. Manage the game now. Delay the game. Take time off the clock. Two and a half minutes to go. Two and a half minutes to go, and it's Anthony Centennial. Come on. Yep, they've got a corner kick coming up. Grenier will do it. Things are not in the favor of Iowa Stay City 19. West right now. As time is not on their side with nearing the two-minute mark of the game. Grenier's kick is up. The header redirected out. Women of Troy going to have to try to find some energy to get it back down the field. Here's Cooper. Tries to lead it to Steigletter. Steigletter out ahead. Has a trailer in Steigletter. Here's Steigletter's shot, and that's just high and wide. And over the top of the bar. And that is what Centennial need to watch out for. The quick break. Cooper to Steigletter. Steigletter got, got a head up and tried to chip Lopez in goal. Go! Just going over the bar. See Trent Payne, the referee, telling we Lopez. Sweep the grass every time we set up for a goal kick. Get Lopez going. And this is down into the corner. Potratz will get it into Cooper. Cooper trying to find a little bit of an opening. And it will be taken away by Centennial. And now it will be a throw in. We're nearing one minute left. This Coming is, down to the end. This is when uh, Iowa City West needs to urge their players to get forward. There's only a minute left. And Ankeny doing everything they can to chew time off the clock. Here's Cooper. Bounces it back out. Deep high shot that goes up and over the bar. Quickly, goalie. 40 seconds left to play. Lopez again back to sweeping the grass. And taking about 10 seconds off the clock to kick it. So this one's going to be headed out. Centennial might see one last charge out of it. Iowa City West needs to gun it up. This is for the 3A state championship. Down to 15. Free kick. And a free kick coming up. Clock winding down, though, as Rhodes looks to be hurt inside of 10. And now we've got a stoppage in play as Rhodes is hurt. 23. Seven seconds to go. Get everybody <laughs> in the box. Get your goalkeeper in there. Come on, Ryan, get in there. And Caitlin Ryan is coming up the field. They're going to set up the free kick. And here it comes, Steigletter with it deep. Everybody's in the box. It's headed back out. Now the kick back in. It's up, and that's going to be it. Ball game, Centennial. You're 3A champ. <laughs> What an exciting finish to this one. Ankeny Centennial gets two goals in the first half from Meg Brent and Ari Gunn, and they hold on to a 2-1 decision. Iowa City West made it really close, though, down the stretch. I tell you what, it was exciting in the end, BJ. They, they really came at them, you know, threw everything at it. The last legs, whatever they had, energy-wise, it was an exciting game. Let's take a look at the game highlights here, and there were plenty in this 3A title game. You take a look at it early on. Misplayed ball by Caitlin Ryan. And Centennial was able to sweep it up. Good centering pass to Meg Brandt, who put it through. That was Geiger who was able to get the assist. And then the corner kick. How about this? Dumped in. Gunn might have gotten the goal there. And it's a 2-0 lead. But in the second half, this is when Iowa City West stepped it up. Look at Leia Rhodes. Get ahead. Slicing through the defense. And an open shot goes top shelf to put it into the back of the net. Made it 2-1. And then Centennial held on with a flurry down the stretch to earn the school's first ever state title in soccer. Wow. Very, very impressive game here today. An impressive day overall, 1A, 2A, and 3A. Seen, we saw a lot of talent here. Yeah, most definitely, BJ. It's time now to go to Al Hilton for the announcement of the all-tournament team. Presenting the all-tournament team medals is Jackie Gilo from the Iowa High School Soccer Coaches Association.
here is your 2016 Class 3A All-Tournament Team. From Ankeny Centennial, Naomi Lopez. From Iowa City West, Emma Cooper. From Waukee, Macy Miller. From Waukee, Taylor Gates. From Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, Sydney Hayden. From Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, Annie Frerichs. From Ankeny Centennial, Kate Johnson. From Iowa City West, Reagan Steigletter. From Ankeny Centennial, Claire Dom. From Iowa City West, Peyton Potritz. And your 2016 All-Tournament Class 3A team captain from Ankeny Centennial, Meg Brandt. There's your All-Tournament team, your captain, Meg Brandt, the two-time Gatorade Player of the Year, finally gets to be a state champion in soccer here at Ankeny Centennial as they're victorious here today over Iowa City West. There's your rest of your All-Tournament team, Emma Cooper, Macy Miller of Waukee, along with Taylor Gates, Kennedy's Hayden and Frerichs, you've got Ankeny Centennial's Kate Johnson, Steigletter from Iowa City West, Claire Dom from Centennial, Peyton Potratz, Potratz, excuse me, from Iowa City West, and Meg Brandt, of course, your all-tournament team captain. What a selection, what a group in Class 3A, and now it's time for the trophy presentation. And now for the trophy presentation. In addition to receiving plaques, each player will receive a commemorative soccer ball provided by Iowa Farm Bureau, title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Ladies and gentlemen, the Class 3A runner-up, Iowa City West and head coach Dave Rosenthal. And your 2016 Class 3A state champions, the Jaguars from Ankeny Centennial and head coach Chris Allen. Congratulations to Ankeny Centennial, your Class 3A state champions, their first state soccer title for that school. And Justin, what a game here in Class 3A. Well, congratulations to Ankeny Centennial. Put everything out there and also credit goes to Iowa City West for a, a fantastic effort and could have come back into the game. You know, at the end of the day, the better team won. They were both very good teams. Fantastic uh, afternoon of football, lots of excitement, and I think the fans here were entertained. Well, it's a final day here for the 2016 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Soccer Championships. Your Class 1A champion, Davenport Assumption, and 2A, Council Bluffs, Lewis Central, and in 3A, Ankeny Centennial. For Justin Borster and the rest of the crew, we want to invite you to tune in at the end of July on the 22nd for the Girls State Softball Tournament from the Harlan Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge. Iowa Public Television has you covered for the State Softball Championships. For the rest of the crew, I'm B.J. Shabin saying so long here from Des Moines. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Trumu, Frito-Lay, and Sara Lee, is a proud sponsor of the 2016 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. 
we congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.